church, isn't it? Um, just wanted to say, it's so lovely to see people. And do feel free to, I know we've, we've got rules and things which I'll just run through in a moment, but do feel free, if you haven't already, just turn around, say hello to the people who are on the rows in front and behind. Give them a wave, give them a thumbs up, whatever, but it's lovely to see everyone. <laughs> As I say, we have got to adhere to some rules still. Um, so if you can wear a mask, then please do. But if you have an exemption, then obviously you don't need to for the whole time. Um, that's up to you. But we do need to wear masks. I'm afraid that we still aren't meant to be singing. So please try to refrain from singing. Um, I know it's really, really hard. But it's, it's so good that we're here and we're praising and worshipping together. And then finally, the other, the other key rule for us is that we are still, although we are allowed to meet in church, you're meant to be staying in your household or your support bubbles um, and not socialising with other people. So if you stay in your seat, leave when you're asked to, um, you know, we, we are following those rules and doing the right thing. But yeah, welcome to church and happy Mother's Day as well to everybody. A bit of a different service than we've had Mother's Day services in the past, but um, still great to be here. I just wanted to reassure you, though, that even though we haven't been having services in church, church has most definitely not been closed. God hasn't been on furlough. <laughs> in fact, I'd venture to say that in the last year, Carmel Church has probably reached and impacted the lives of more people than ever before. Over the last year, everything's been so different, and yet God's still showing his love for us. And he's still using us to show that love for others. And we're going to start a bit differently this morning because one of the main reasons that church has still been open and still reaching out and showing God's love is through the community work we've been doing. So I've asked Jill if she'll come and stand at the front with me with that microphone and I'm just going to ask her a few questions just to inform you, the people at home who are watching, a few of the things that have been going on. So I've got a few questions for Jill. We'll try and keep her brief. <laughs> is that one on mic? Is it switched on? Yes, it is. I can hear it. So, Jill, we know that you've been involved with Bellies Not Bins for a long time, but please can you tell us, first of all, how has Bellies Not Bins changed since March last year? Well, we've doubled, doubled in size. We've gone from a food recycle project and to a food bank, and we're working off less volunteers than ever. Yeah. Um, yeah, um, it's completely changed. Um, a lot harder than it was, yeah. and we're dealing with such different types of people. So any type of person you can imagine, we get at the front door, and they can't come in, but mm. we are servicing them completely. Yeah. So we're doing between 90 and 100 a week, Wow. compared to, say, 40 to 60. What and we for have those of you that don't know, those food parcels, it's not just a bag of food or a box of food, it's two bags of food, and it includes healthy, fresh fruit and veg. Sorry, I should have said at the start, for those that don't know, Jill is our community and family worker. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> should have introduced you right at the start, Jill. Um, so 90 to 100 people per week. How many food parcels have been distributed since the start of the pandemic? I did ask her to prepare these numbers in advance. I had to get advance. these notes out. <laughs> so this is since March. So this is 50 weeks. And it's 3,976 wow. parcels. That's to all the volunteers. It's absolutely amazing. It's incredible. It's incredible. Absolutely incredible. And what else have you and the church offered to help the community at this time? <laughs> well, it's a massive team of volunteers, and it's, they give up their time weekly. Mm -hmm. So we've been doing um, summer pack lunches. So they've been alternative volunteers because they just they be here all day packing up, and we're doing 140 a week, wow. approximately. Um, and we'll, this time round we did small childrens and we also did you know older childrens as well, um, and we're doing more this time. At the summer we was doing about 60 a week, but yeah. this time it's been 140. It's been amazing. Um, we also do um, over 60 meals, what everybody knows, and community meal came back and breakfast came back. So the church is reaching out to lots and lots of people. So 
have you got the numbers? Yes. How many pack lunches? How many meals? How many over 60s okay. and breakfasts? So let's start with um, summer pack lunches. We did 410 over the six weeks. That was when right. we first started. Then in October, there was a big thing about free pack lunches and it was all advertised everywhere. And we did 410 then. So then we've been open since nine weeks because of the kids. Yeah. And we did 1,294 wow. pack lunches. Wow. We're not even in a year in, and we yeah. started in August. We've done 2,114 children pack lunches. Wow, that's incredible. It is incredible. Yeah. So, yeah. anyone's got any ideas for the six weeks holidays? I'm running out of ideas to put in <laughs> pack lunches. So, please <laughs> let me know just a, a story <laughs> or a theme. Yeah. I'm running out of them now. But, um, yeah, so we're pa- back open at Easter. So, that's another two weeks, and then we'll be back open at six weeks holidays again. Excellent. Yeah. yeah. Over 60 meals. Yeah. We've done 532 over 60 meals because that's fortnightly. And yeah. we started off with 16. Yeah. And now this week, I was just looking at my figures, yeah. we're on 76. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't cap it. I think I need to learn the word no. I think you keep telling me. Um, but, yeah, uh, that's amazing. It is incredible. I mean, yeah. And we've had so much funding, what's just yes. come. Yeah. Oh, God, completely. Yeah. You know, there's no no other reason community meal we did at 305 christmas meals we did 229 breakfasts including yours this week we did 400 and we're only doing breakfast once a month yeah so a we lot, are grabbing it? a lot of people yeah the total figures without bellies that's 3580 wow lunches that is and meals yeah so, as you can see, the, the work that's been going on in church with Jill and Jill leading a team of volunteers has been absolutely incredible. What feedback have you had, Jill, from people <laughs> that tells you that people appreciate what we're doing? Um, there's a gentleman who found us on the street, you know, I brought people on and it brought people in and he said, it's a lifeline. You know, he's on a, mo- on a state pension and currently has got really no money. Yeah. So he comes, he loves it. He doesn't actually go to church. Right. Um, but yeah, you can have those conversations about religion yeah. when you're at the front door. As long as he's like, you know, it's amazing. But people say it's a lifeline. We can have a day trip for the day. Yeah. You know, yeah. we have people just come in because they need to get out and socialise. Yeah. There's also people who actually really, really need it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And we're open to every type of person. Yeah. And what's the best part of your job? <sighs> Working for God. <laughs> it's amazing showing Jesus' love, and that's. To show compassion to somebody, yeah. you know, um, giving them something. Yeah. It's amazing when you say it's free and they just look at you. Yeah. Yeah. They look at you like it's um, you're going off your head. Um, yeah. But if we can offer it for free and show Jesus his love, because that was Absolutely. free. Absolutely. He never put a value on that, did he? You know, he, you know, he showed it for free. So yeah. Excellent. And last question, a hard one this. Yep, but often when Jill's advertising all these meals and things on Facebook or WhatsApp, she posts a Bible verse to try and encourage people to take up the offer of the meals, but also to let them know that we're from church. Is there a Bible verse that's your encouragement to do what you're doing? Well, I have a wall of pictures, and um, Ollie gave me this last year. It's got the date on it. Um, And I put it on, and I look at it, and I've got ones off Christine and things, but this one means a lot. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It do, it's, it is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It's, it is not easy angered. It's not record of wrongs. I can't read his writing. Sorry. <laughs> um, his wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but replies with the truth, rejoices with the truth. Yeah. It always protects, always trusts, and always hopes. Always. You'll have to read that last one. Your writing is terrible, mate. Always um, perseveres, yeah. love never fails. Love never fails. And it's on the wall, so I read that Brilliant. quite often. Thank you, Jill. I think Jill's doing an amazing job, and I'm really thrilled that through the work that the church has been doing, we've reached so many people, and I think a lot of that is down to the hard work that Jill's put in. So let's give her a round of applause. And the volunteers. God uses ordinary people to do amazing things. We're really blessed by having Jill doing this work, and we're really excited about the things that she's going to be doing once we can start to meet face-to-face as well, because I can see things just exploding. So 
thanks, Jill, and um, thanks to the church for the support that you give for what, we, what we've been able to do. So let's stand and we're going to praise together for God, praise God for all that he's doing in our lives and in our church. Let's uh, stand and hand over to the worship team. Good morning all. It's lovely to see you all again. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness I dare not trust the sweetest friend but wholly trust in Jesus name My hope is built on nothing less in Jesus blood and righteousness I dare not trust the sweetest frame but wholly trust in Jesus name Christ alone cornerstone the weak made strong in the same
Lord, you are that. You are our cornerstone. Lord, you're the one who keeps us. You're the one, Lord, who sustains us daily, Lord. You're the one, Lord, who is our strength, Lord. Praise you and our guide and our light. Praise your wonderful name this morning. Lord, how can we thank you enough? How can we praise you enough, Lord? You've saved us. Lord, what a future we have in you. And yes, Lord, we could look around and see sometimes there may be difficulties around. But Lord, you are our hope and our strength this morning. Praise your wonderful name. And Lord, we can step forward, Lord, with confidence in you. Because you're our Lord and our Saviour. And Lord, you're our coming King as well. And I praise you this morning, Lord, that we can be here. And we can praise you, Lord, in our hearts. Even though we can't lift our voices so much, but Lord, in our hearts, we can be praising you. Lord, we can absorb your presence. Praise your wonderful name. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, let everything that we do here today, Lord, just praise your wonderful name. Lord, through your word, speak into our lives. Through your word, Lord, sustain us and give us those things that we need. Lord, I pray each one of us, as we've come today, we've come from different situations, with different needs. Lord, from different circumstances. And yet, you, Lord, you're a God who is able to meet each one of us here today and minister to us, Lord, and meet each and every need that is here today, I pray. And even those who are listening at home, Lord, I pray this morning, Lord, that you will be what they need this morning. Lord, I pray that you will strengthen them. Lord, that you lift their hearts. Lord, that they will know that you are around them. Lord, that you love them. Lord, that, and as we've just heard, Lord, that your love is amazing. It is amazing and it's free. Praise your wonderful name. So, Lord, this morning, Lord, I pray that this will be a great and special time, Lord, as we're here together and as people are at home gathered round, Lord, and just listening, Lord, let it be what we need today, I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The splendor of the King Clothed in majesty All the earth rejoice All the earth rejoice He wraps himself in light And darkness tries to hide and trembles at his voice trembles at his voice how great is our God sing with me how great is our God and all will see how great how great our God From age to age we stand And time is in His hands Beginning in the end Beginning in the end The God
We praise you this morning, Lord, for your overwhelming, indescribable glory that you give to us, Lord. And we just thank you that you pour it out without regard for what it cost you. And we pray that you just move and work in the hearts of your people here today, Lord, and those who are watching at home. I want to show your love to everyone, Lord.
Jesus Christ from the dead. Let now the poor stand and confess that my portion is Him. Now your church shine as the bride that you soar in your heart as you offer up your life. Let now the lost be welcomed home by the saved and adopted as your
Because God is with you. He is with you every step of the way. There is not a single step that you can take that is not, that is not where he's not with you, that he's not walking with you. And he has his hand upon your life and his hand, hand upon you in every way, in every circumstance. And in your heart this morning, take heart because his love for you is without measure. And his, his hand is upon you. And I just want to stress that this morning, that the hand of God is upon our lives and just because things have been a little bit different, that, that doesn't mean that the, God, the hand of God has not been with us. That he hasn't stopped walking with us every step of the way. And his promises are still the same. And the power of his spirit in us is still the same. And the way forward is still the same because he's a God who leads people forward into new things, into exciting things. And the things that he has got prepared for us, well, we, we don't really know what they are right now, but we can go with confidence this morning. We can move forward with confidence in the things of God. So this morning, take heart. Take heart this morning because the God of, of, of all creation, the King of kings, Jesus, the Saviour, the, the, the coming King, he is with you every step of the way. Read the word of God and allow it to sustain you and speak into your heart. Read that word and allow his spirit to quicken it and bring it to life because God is with us. So this morning, take heart. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Praise your wonderful name. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. <clears throat> Amen. Lord, we commit your word this morning. Lord, and as Janice brings it to us, Lord, I pray, Lord, that she'll feel an amazing quickening of the power of your spirit in her heart. Lord, that she'll say things, Lord, that are, that are both powerful and yet encouraging. And Lord, I pray that even though that, she, uh, that she'll feel that liberty and freedom, Lord, to even say the things that maybe not have written down or prepared, but Lord, through the power of your spirit, Lord, she can speak into our hearts and into our lives. So we pray for an anointing of your Holy Spirit upon her as she brings your word. I ask it. In your name, amen. Amen. The last time we were in church with a congregation was the 3rd of January, and Bob was speaking. And he asked on that day, not surprisingly, if you'd made any New Year's resolutions. Can you remember? Hands up if you made a resolution. Any of you? Oh, anyone at home? Wow, no one admitting to them at least. 
I was going to say be honest, but maybe the uh, absence of hands is you being honest, that you maybe made them without a thought that you might keep them. Did you know that 43% of people who make New Year's resolutions have given them up by the end of January? It's even sooner than that. It's by the 19th if you've um, resolved to diet or eat more healthily. And I have to confess that that's me included. But one thing in Bob's message about New Year's resolutions, I was inspired to start reading the Bible in, the, in a year, which looks quite daunting, doesn't it, really? But um, using a plan, and I'm proud to stay, say I've not given up on that one. I'm on day 72, I think, at the moment. The plan that I'm following has three verses each, or three passages each day, one from the Psalms or the Proverbs, one from the Old Testament, and one from the New Testament, which actually makes it a bit more of a, an easy thing to do than starting at the beginning and thinking I've got to get to page whatever it is at the end of my Bible, 1,000 and something. You know, it, it's, it's not manageable like that, is it? It's too daunting. And after only a first couple of weeks of doing that Bible reading plan, reading one ver passage from the Old Testament, the New Testament, and one from Psalms or Proverbs, it, I realized that I was getting a great encouragement in two specific ways. The first is that you really see the connections between the Old Testament, the Psalms, and the New Testament. So much in the Old Testament points to Jesus. And it's sometimes only when you go back and read it with obviously the knowledge we have of Jesus that you realize that. So much of what David says in the Psalms points to Jesus, points to that awareness of relationship with God that thankfully we have through Jesus. And it also, it shows through the, um, through the story that God wove of, of people's history and at the moment, even on day 72, really, I've only got through Genesis and Exodus, but the stories in there just point to God's plan in working out his plans for us. The second thing that encouraged me with this style of reading is that even reading Genesis and Exodus, just a couple of, of, of chapters of the Bible, there's one thing that really comes through. God uses ordinary people. The reason I wanted to interview Jill at the beginning was it's just that recognition that even today God is using us as ordinary people but doing amazing and special things. And even better than that, Genesis and Exodus shows us that God doesn't just use ordinary people, he uses flawed people. So you can imagine last week when Ruth was opening the service and talking about ordinary flawed people in the Old Testament I thought she must have read my notes, or maybe my mind. But I'm taking encouragement from the fact that God prompt, prompted us both to speak on the same theme. I'm taking that as a confirmation that this is something he wants to imprint on our hearts and minds, that he uses ordinary people like you and me, flawed people like you and me, to do special things and to carry out his plan. Plans. Wow. Plans have been difficult, haven't they, lately? I think we've all had to cancel, rearrange, rework our plans, do things in a different way. On a normal Mother's Day, we would probably have had the children up at the front. So Springthorpe children, here's your challenge if you want to come and do a song. <laughs> no, it's great to see you here. It's thrill really, really blessing us to see children back in church. But on a normal day, the kids would have been up at the front doing a poem or a song, giving out gifts. And it would have been really lovely. It's what we've done every year for as long as I can remember. Or you may, maybe would have had a plan to take your mum out later or to be taken out as a mum. Plans. We've started with plan A and then gone through plan B, plan C. No, we can't do that. No, we can't meet there. We'll get to plan Z and maybe we can do something, even if it's just a Zoom call. God has always had a plan for his people, starting in the Garden of Eden. But the sin and waywardness of his people has forced God to seemingly come up with a new plan over and over and over again. I'm sure that's not how it works. I'm sure that his plan was perfect from the start, but and maybe, maybe all planned out. That We might see it as plan B, plan C, but you know, God, God knows what's going on. I recommended this reading plan a few weeks ago to Jackie. 
And I loved that the next week she came back and she was so excited that even on the second day of reading the Bible in a year, in Genesis 3, when Adam and Eve had eaten the apple and God came into the garden, he says, where are you? Jackie was telling me how that had really blessed her. Because that's our reminder that God's plan from the very start was to seek his people, to make a relationship with his people. His plan A was a perfect world, but unfortunately we know the story. We know that the sin came in and forced plans B, C, D, and so on. But we see right through Genesis, God using flawed people, and I don't intend to go through all of them, but I'm going to pick out a couple of examples of God using flawed, ordinary people to see how his plan works in spite of all the things that get in the way. So I'm going to start with Abraham. And after many years of sinfulness and separation from God, God chose this one man, Abraham, to put his plan into action and to bring about restoration with his people. It says in Abraham, this was what God promised Abraham, I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you and make you famous, and you will be a blessing to others. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who treat you with contempt. All the families on earth will be blessed through you. Abraham was obedient. He did what God told him to do. He moved his family. He kept his eyes on God, and he trusted God's promise to him. And it tells us in Genesis that he was successful. He became wealthy, and he recognized that this blessing came from God. But he started to doubt God's plan. He wanted a son and heir. Still, God was patient with him, and he renewed and emphasized his promise to Abraham and said, you will have a son of your own who will be your heir. Then the Lord took Abraham outside, and he said to him, look up into the sky and count the stars if you can. That's how many descendants you will have. And Abraham believed the Lord, and the Lord counted him as righteous because of his faith. Abraham had belief but he didn't have patience. He took matters into his own hands. God's plan was for Abraham to have a, a son with Sarah, and God could make it happen, even to a 100-year-old man and a 90-year-old woman. No wonder Abraham and Sarah laughed at the prospect. I think for us, having tried to homeschool our grandson for four weeks, I'm not sure that if I was told I was going to have a baby, even in my age, never mind at 90, I would have done... Uh, just a laugh, I think it might have been something far more reactionary. But God had that plan. And he had a plan even to test Abraham more than that. Not just test his patience. But we see one of those Old Testament hints of Jesus. God tested Abraham by asking him to sacrifice Isaac. Imagine the agony of having yearned for this child and then being challenged to sacrifice him. When they arrived at the place, this is in Genesis 22, when they arrived at the place where God had told him to go, Abraham built an altar and arranged the wood on it. Then he tied his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. And Abraham picked up the knife to kill his son as a sacrifice. At that moment, thank goodness, at that moment the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, yes, replied Abraham, here I am. Don't lay a hand on the boy, the angel said. Do not hurt him in any way. For now I know that you truly fear God. You have not withheld from me even your son, your only son. Abraham was an ordinary man. But his obedience to and his trust in God made him something special. He was by no means perfect. He suffered from something that's a big problem for us today. He thought he could solve his problems himself. He thought he knew better than God. But God had that plan and purpose to use Abraham. He blessed him, he challenged him, he tested him, but ultimately he provided for him exactly as he'd always planned and promised to. And what an amazing glimpse of Jesus when it says, you've not withheld from me even your son, your only son. We know, because we've read the rest of the story, that God would sacrifice his own son. And at the moment, I'm reading quite a challenging part of the Old Testament in my Bible planks. I'm reading Leviticus. And all those rules for sacrifice, for different things, are really hard to understand, so detailed, so complex. But actually, what a great reminder that it's not like that for us. The rules for us, our response 
to Jesus' sacrifice is simple. Romans 10 says, if you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God. And it is by openly declaring your faith that you are saved. Moving on to another flawed man in Genesis, Joseph. He was a brash, boastful, overconfident young man. As a young man, he certainly didn't seem to understand the word humility, but played on being his father Jacob's favourite and quite literally managed to completely alienate his brothers to the point that they wanted to kill him. And yet that confidence, even when he was young and probably a bit insufferable, he knew it came from God. Even through the setbacks in his life, having been sold into slavery, Joseph was still completely confident that God had a special plan for him. And more importantly, that confidence in God showed to the people around him. So when he'd been sold into slavery and he was working for Potiphar, it tells us in Genesis 39, the Lord was with Joseph, so he succeeded in everything he did as he served in the home of his Egyptian master. Potiphar noticed this and realized that the Lord was with Joseph, giving him success in everything he did. That's amazing, isn't it? A slave working in his master's house, but his master noticed and realized that it was God working through Joseph. And even through the subsequent events of his life, being falsely accused of a crime, a long time feeling abandoned in prison, then facing Pharaoh, he never forgot, Joseph never forgot that God was with him. He took each setback and seemingly came out of it wiser, with greater integrity, more positive. After his initial boastfulness with his brothers, he did give credit to God for his ability to interpret dreams, for his wisdom. And again, this was noticed by the Pharaoh, the ruler, the king of Egypt, effectively. Joseph's suggestions, this is when he'd interpreted Pharaoh's dream, Joseph's suggestions were well received by Pharaoh and his officials. So Pharaoh asked his officials, can we find anyone else like this man so obviously filled with the spirit of God? Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, since God has revealed the meaning of the dreams to you, clearly no one else is as, in, is as intelligent or as wise as you are. You will be in charge of my court and all my people will take orders from you. Only I sitting on my throne will have a rank higher than yours. Pharaoh said to Joseph, I have hereby put you in charge of the entire land of Egypt. Joseph, an ordinary man, but made special because he recognized that his wisdom, his insight, his strength and his power came from God. And it showed. We too were ordinary people made special by God. We can learn from all those ordinary flawed people in Genesis. We can learn to be obedient to trust God, to know where our strength lies. And we can have that special relationship with God now because of Jesus' sacrifice for us. God's given his only son to pay the price for our sin. Was that plan Z or was that maybe the plan all along? And even more, we have the privilege of being blessed with the Holy Spirit living in us. In last week's service, we sang, God, you're so good. And there was a verse in that which really hit me. It says, I am blessed, I am called, I am healed, I am whole, I am saved in Jesus' name. Highly favoured, anointed, filled with your power for the glory of Jesus' name. And for me, that just about sums up our incredible position today. Ordinary flawed people, but we're blessed, called, healed, whole, saved by the incredible sacrifice of Jesus. And astonishingly, in spite of our flaws and our failings, we're still highly favoured and anointed with the power of the Holy Spirit. That gives us something extra. It makes our ordinary extraordinary. And yet the final line in that verse is our challenge. Why are we given these blessings, this power, for the glory of Jesus' name? Our challenge is to let others see the extraordinary impact of God's spirit and power living in us. We need to be known through what we say and what we do for our kindness, our goodness, our understanding, our wisdom, our teaching, our compassion, our generosity. And we need to be people to be able to see, like they did with Joseph, that these good qualities come from God. 
In Psalm 27, David says, I am confident I will see the Lord's goodness while I am here in the land of the living. How can people today see the Lord's goodness? It could be through getting a food parcel or a bacon butty. It could be through hearing a word of encouragement in one of our broadcast services, which we've been blessed to be able to carry on right through. It could be through the words of a worship song that really stick in your head. It could be through an assurance that we're praying for and with someone in a time of need. But our challenge is to be the goodness of the Lord. We're ordinary people, but with God's spirit living and working in us, we can make a difference and have an extraordinary impact. So don't focus on your flaws, focus on God's favour. Amen. Thanks, Janice. It was a great word, wasn't it? Don't focus on your flaws. I'm glad it's that way around. And, you know, I'm glad that God uses flawed people. Can you imagine if it was that God can only use us once we've got rid of our flaws? We wouldn't be able to do an awful lot, would we? Great word, thank you. I'm just going to do the notices, let you know what's happening this week. If we can have them up. Look at us. Over 60s afternoon tea. It's like we've moved to Wilmslow, isn't it? <laughs> Afternoon tea on Tuesday for the over 60s. If you order with Jill and come and collect between three and four. Only, of course, if you're over 60. Mm? Yes, yes, and when you're having your afternoon tea, please, everyone. Um, on. Beg pardon? Uh, I'm well qualified for that. Man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah uh, Belly's Not Bins on Thursday. So if you'd like a, a, a bag of food, £1.50. Um, if you need a bag of food and you want to help stop food waste, again, book with Jill and then come and collect. Between, <clears throat> beg pardon? <laughs> All right, OK. Book with Jill or Ollie on that number and come and collect between 12.45 and 3. Um, if you want to attend some, any of the Sunday services, please book in with Janice. As you can see, it's quite a complicated system to try and fit as many people in as possible. So the sooner you can book for the Sundays, the better. Just give Janice a call on that number. Yeah, just want to mention something we're going to do. We heard at the, uh, the start of the service all the fantastic work that's been going on uh, during the pandemic with the community meals, the over 60s, the packed lunches for children. Um, and the great thing is, as was alluded to, we're not just meeting the uh, physical needs. People are lonely, aren't they? People are scared. And we're meeting emotional and spiritual needs as well. Um, and we want to make sure we can continue this. And in fact, we want to expand the stuff we're doing. And certainly when we can back, get back in church properly, uh, things are, we believe, going to grow even further. But there is, with all this work, of course, a financial cost. We've got to pay for food. We've got to pay for equipment. We've got to pay for wages. Uh, we're, we're hoping to get a new cooker, which, uh, you know, the commercial cookers are pretty expensive. Um, so we're going to have a weekend of giving on the 27th and 28th of March uh, to give everyone the opportunity to support all the work that's going on. So what we're going to do, we're going to open the church between 11 and 12 on the Saturday... Obviously, people who are coming on the Sunday can give uh, a, a, in the offering on, on the Sunday. But we're also going to open on Sunday as well between 12 and 1. So people can come along and give a donation to, to really help with the work that's going on. If you don't want to turn up at church personally, you can give online. I think the PayPal button, Neil, is on the, the website still. So you can use that 
or you can simply find out the church bank account details and do an online transfer for, from your own account. Just a, a side note, really, if you're a taxpayer, if you're a UK taxpayer and you're going to give a gift, please have a word with myself or Neil to make sure the church can get the tax back the, that it can claim. Not everybody, particularly with social distance and everything, not everyone can volunteer to be part of what's going on. Not everyone can cook a meal. Not everyone can deliver meals to people. So, so this is an opportunity for everyone to be able to give and, and be part of it. So I just want to encourage you to really get behind it. And I think the scripture is already up there, but I just want to, to read it, what it says in James. It says, What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such faith save them? Suppose a brother or a sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to them, Go in peace, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. As I say, we can't all volunteer and be part of things, but this is an opportunity to really support through our giving. If you've got any questions, this is in, what we're saying is this is in addition to our normal gifts and offerings, but if you've got any questions about it, please speak to, to me or Neil. But we just want to make sure that the work can continue, people can carry on getting blessed, uh, and that, as I say, that the, the work can grow in the future. Yeah, it does say week commencing 22nd of March. We narrowed it down to the, to the Saturday and Sunday with specific slots. When it'd be good if people can come along and, and donate in person. Okay, have we got a final worship song? I know we've got... Oh, yeah, sorry. On the way out... Is that for just mothers, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> All the ladies. Uh, yeah, I was trying to include the men there, love. Uh, on the way out, all ladies can take a gift from the table in the reception area. Uh, you'll see where they are. Uh, so I think we're going to have a final song, and then we've got a couple of happy birthdays as well, I think. Feel free to stand and join us if you want to. Well, I can see the waters raging at my feet. I can feel the breath of those surrounding me. I can hear. The sound of nations rising up, we will not be overtaken, we will not be overcome. I can walk down this dark and painful road, I can face every fear of the unknown. I can hear all God's children singing out. We will not be overtaken, we will not be overcome. The same power that rose Jesus from the grave, the same power that commands the dead to wake, lives in us, lives in us. The same power that moves mountains when he speaks, the same power that can calm a raging sea lives in us, lives in us, lives in us, lives in us. We have hope that His promises are true in His strength. There is nothing we can't do, yes we know There are greater things in store We will not be overtaken, we will not be overcome The same power that rose Jesus from the grave The same power that commands the dead to wait lives in when he speaks the same power that can come 
greater is he that is living in me he's conquered our enemy no power of darkness no weapon prevails we stand here in victory oh greater is he that is living in me he's conquered our enemy no power of darkness no weapon prevails we stand here in victory the same power that rose jesus from the grave the same power that commands the dead to wake lives in us lives in us the same power that moves mountains when he speaks the same power that can calm a raging sea lives in us lives in us lives in us the last thing we've got to do is to sing happy birthday to joy and janet so we, we can't have them here on chairs, obviously, but we can still sing happy birthday. So. Well, you tell your <laughs> We will resume chair standing for birthdays at some point in the not too distant future, hopefully. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Joy and Janet. Happy birthday to you. May the good Lord bless 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 you. 